I don't believe that it was a planned rug. I do believe that it was always an option for the creator because I think if you're the type of person that just walks away from something, then it's always been an option for you from the start, yeah. clearly. Uh, welcome, Muffet from Ada Elements. I'm mm-hmm. glad to connect with you. And like I like I said earlier, this is actually the second time we're we're trying this intro because I messed up the audio. But yeah, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're doing in the CNFT space? Sure. Um, well, I started a few months ago uh, as a community manager early on. Um, Really, I just enjoy sharing things that I'm passionate about in a space. Right now, I'm kind of more focused on trying to give some more exposure to, you know, talented artists. I'd like to bring um, more art lovers, more collector types into the space. Um, Mm -hmm. I'd like to help bring more women into the space as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, I I mean, I do do the odd flip now and again, but uh, I mostly focus on, you know, helping build communities um, helping grow projects and basically just sharing anything that I think is really unique or special um, in the space. And I, I, I tend to try and focus on that, those things and spotlight those things because uh, those are the parts of the community that I want to see develop more. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much me. Uh, I'm a decent communicator, so that's mostly what I do in regards to the current project. And... Um, you know, just kind of give it my all. Basically, I'm, I'm when I when I get on something, I, I am very heavily motivated into it. So, <laughs> so basically, I just I put a lot of grit behind it. Yeah. So, how did you find yourself in that in that position? I guess, like, um, like, how did you discover Cardano and NFTs? Like, how did you end up in the space to begin with? Uh, because I actually I relate to a lot of what you're saying. Like, I'm very interested in bringing uh, more high quality artists into the space and and improving the space in, a, in, in those ways and we definitely need more women in the space so how did you how did you get here sure uh well uh it's my husband is the one who actually started um investing in crypto some years ago uh our biggest bag was in cardano we both were just big fans i guess of the fundamentals of cardano um he started with nfts around the time of clays uh Mm -hmm. but he actually got kind of burnt out in regards to nfts so then he started focusing more just on the crypto aspect and i started helping with the nft aspect um early on he kind of just wanted me to like flip stuff but (laughs) more and more i would just i I would focus more on like kind of like helping communities and and helping grow communities because i just saw way more value in that was he more uh, into the flipping and and just kind of making making money and yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) so it was not what he expected when i got (laughs) into the space but um, but I mean, regardless, I, I, I've been making my own way in the space, um, you know, working as a community manager here or there. Um, that's that's where Elements obviously comes in, because my first project ended up being, you know, a rug. Uh, I don't believe that it was a planned rug. I do believe that it was always an option for the creator, because I think if you're the type of person that just walks away from something, then it's always been an option for you from the start, yeah. clearly. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily planned. I think that they made some poor decisions and, uh, they, I I think he made some poor decisions and I think in the end he decided, well, instead of reinvesting into this and trying to save this, I'm just going to step away from it. And I, I think the, I guess the pressure was too much for him. I, I don't think that. Not to be mean, but I don't think he was a very strong-minded person in that sense. Uh, I, I mean, it, it was pretty toxic. Uh, communities can get really nasty when the floor does not meet expectations. So I do understand that it was pretty toxic. It was for me as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I can see, I can understand the disappointment. You know, if you're you're investing. Well, perhaps what your investment is is not that big. But if you take into account the enormous investment, how much people are investing into something and 
if, if you promise them something from that, I mean, I, I'm I'm down with projects that are just art projects, and I'm just supporting an artist to continue creating. But that was not the idea behind this project. That's not really how it was marketed. Um, so you had yeah. all these people invest, and then nothing gets reinvested. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely. I, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I definitely want to dig dig deeper into, you know, that whole story because I, I think it's it's definitely an interesting story and we can take a lot of lessons from it. Um, but I am also, yeah, I also wanted to take a step back and did you say that this was your first project or your first rug pull? Cla uh, Ada Clouds was the first project where I started officially working as a community manager. Gotcha. Um, I also was working for Nifty World after that and then Cardano mm -hmm. Capital. Um, I stopped working for Nifty World around January, a uh, very beginning of January, because I took on Ada Elements, because I took okay. on the Revival Project. Yeah. Um, so I had to quit Nifty World because I, I don't like to give like a half ass kind of a service. And I, and I felt really bad that I really wasn't keeping up because I was juggling three projects at the time. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm actually just community manager and project leader for Ada Elements uh, and community manager for Cardano Castle right now. So, uh, yeah, I stopped working with Nifty World. But I mean, I, I really enjoyed being part of that project and I learned a lot from it. Yeah, and, and they are actually minting this week, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, and, and um, I mean, <laughs> they've had a lot of what could be seen as bad luck, but in the end, honestly, it it really uh, helped strengthen the community uh, because all the people who were really just there for the temporary hype and to flip kind of just would get bored every time it was delayed. Yeah. So it, it would kind of, and, and I really think, I think slow grow communities are the best. Uh, I agree. They build relationships, yeah. So in reality, his original launch date was much earlier. Um, but because it's been a slow growth community, I think it's become a stronger community, stronger yeah. relationship. Could, yeah. could be a silver lining, a blessing in disguise, that they're almost forced to have this slow organic growth, which I think is the healthiest way to grow a community. But yeah. I do, I, since you're the expert, uh, you know, I do want to ask you, first of all, you know, what does a community manager do? Is it an important position? Is it a paid position? And like, what do you do? I, I'm curious about that. Can you can you give me a little bit of insight? Um, so a community manager, basically, it. I mean, it depends on the project leader and what they think, what their expectations are. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I personally tend to do is, you know, just... Uh, be very um, focused on the messaging, uh, like messaging in regards to social media. If, if, if I'm left in charge of that messaging in regards to like announcements and about us and staff or whatever, like um, the idea is to basically communicate. You're communicating the vision of the project leader and artist to everyone constantly. So you're mm -hmm. constantly communicating the vision of the leader to the community, either through interacting with them, uh, through announcements, messaging, through social media. But you're basically always communicating. Um, and by the same token, you're a bit of a bridge between the team itself and the community. Um, because by the same token, you need to see the investor, empathize with the investor, understand their expectations. Um, understand what it is that they want to get from the project, where their interest lies, and communicate that back to the team. So it's basically like a, a very communication heavy position, making sure that the vision of the project is clear to the investors and making sure that the investors' expectations are uh, being met and that they are reasonable, realistic, um, and that both things are in harmony, basically, w yeah. in regards to what the team intends to do and what it is that the investor expects to receive. Um, yeah, I, mods sometimes are a paid position, sometimes are not. Mm -hmm. I believe community manager is usually a paid position. Um, I do believe in paying mods. I, I personally pay both my Discord managers monthly. I don't expect them to wait until after a mint. But that's just because for me, 
personally, I do very much value community building. I do think community manager is an important position. I do think, you know, even moderators, discord managers, whatever is a very important uh, position. Um, basically building your community, that's the foundation of the project. The art, of course, you know, you're not going to have anyone without the art. But what makes it an actual project is the community itself. It's not going to go anywhere without the community. Yeah, I would have to agree. I, I was ju just talking to um, Cardano Man yesterday, and we were talking about some of the strongest projects that have some of the strongest floor prices, you know, if you will, or some of the most staple uh, projects out there and they're all projects that have really strong communities and that you know that includes blue chips like clays but also you know the goat, goat tribe yeah exactly yeah I was exactly <laughs> yeah so i i i definitely agree with you on that um and i agree yeah, with you that parts of our space in my opinion yep, goat tribe, yep. definitely Exactly. Um, yeah, I like that there was a community, you know, that, that was really just focused on the aesthetics of the project, um, that didn't really care that the mint was very slow, that kind of just built around that and just hanging out together um, and just being fans of something together is really cool. I mean, I, I really hope we see that in more places. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, okay, so let's talk about elements. Well, what I called Ada Clouds because I haven't been really right. following the projects that closely since the rug pull because when i hear about a rug pull i immediately you know um just, i don't know just, yeah right? just dis dismiss it put it to the side yeah. this happened to the gingerbreads i i sold all my gingerbreads uh gingerbread squad uh at the time and and um but we know their story and now you experienced a rug pull. Yeah, it was it was hugely disappointing for me. Um, How and did it was that hugely... happen? Well, uh, basically, there there were some poor choices that were made. Um, so we had a lot of hype at the time when we released a lot. There was a lot of mm -hmm. hype. There was a lot of people. I had I actually that. brought. Yeah, I had actually brought a lot of friends there, which is one of the reasons I felt so awful when things didn't go well. Um, mm. so I had actually brought a lot of friends there. It was a very hyped project at the time. I think that there was some miscommunication. I mean, there was miscommunication with me as well, because all these previews, all these promos that had been going around is the expectation that people had. And then in reality, it, it, it was all very rushed, the artwork itself for the release there was the promos and then there was the generative and the promos versus the generative was a completely different situation. So people came for this really beautiful, unique artwork, which at the yeah. time actually 3d art was not like that predominant in the CNFT space yet. So it really stood out at the time because it was 3d artwork and because it was high quality looking 3d artwork. True. So people were very surprised to see a project like that at the time. Um, in Cardano and at only 40 ADA. And then that is what I was communicating to people because that is what was communicated to me. Mm -hmm. um, and those were the promos that we were showing everywhere. And then it came time, you know, to start the generative, which they started super late, like very, very close to their, their deadline. And the generative work looked completely different. They were yeah. not even going to include the promos in the work. And, and I said to them, look, we've been showing these everywhere. You at least need to include these as one-to-ones. Yeah. So those one-to-one -one promos, yeah, like five of them were thrown in there. They showed me some of the, of the generative work that they were going to release. I saw, you know, the much lower quality. quality. I saw the floor traits. The first thing oh. I said to them was, yeah, the floor traits look dumb. <laughs> yep. They, they did not look yeah. good. The floor traits don't make sense. They're just tacked on. It's just, it detracts from the entire artwork. And unfortunately, the project leader at the time, his priorities were really skewed um, because he was very obsessed with releasing on a specific date because he wanted to release before Ugly Bros. 
and he wanted to release before Christmas and he wanted to capitalize on the hype and he didn't want to lose the hype. So the actual artwork was given yeah. very good time. I gotta um, say, those those are some red flags to me. And just to be honest, like um, I saw the I saw the previews, and I immediately was excited, like a lot of people. And and it's kind of interesting to hear you talk about it because that's exactly how I experienced it. And a lot of people in in the Viking squad were talking about it, and a lot of people minted it. But I saw them. Um, I had picked up on on a couple of kind of maybe some some red flags and and then i saw saw the generative pieces come out and i immediately <laughs> was turned off and did not yes yeah, they, they did in fact um they did in fact show previews of the generative work before the mint <clears throat> Um, so they did show everyone what they would basically be receiving. And I'm guessing just a lot of people didn't look at it because they were just, you know. The, the FOMO had kicked were, in, everybody is hyped and yeah. Yeah, it was just, I mean, they sold out in under, in like, in a day or so, from what I yeah. recall. Um, but yeah, so it was just really skewed priorities. And then I don't know why they even showed me the artwork because they said, okay, give us your feedback. And then when I gave the feedback, the artist at the time was super stressed out because he was being pushed to release by a certain date. So if I said, yeah. oh, this is stupid, then he would be like, fine, I'll just cut it. And I would be like, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then the project leader like pulled me aside basically in, in through DMs. I was like, oh, yeah, actually, can you not comment on it anymore? Like, don't comment on the artwork anymore because he's really stressed out. And I was like... <laughs> What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that, happening here? Not a good um, situation. Not not very yeah. healthy. No, and so we did. I mean, in all honesty, we did release those previews, but I guess people were either not paying attention, or they were already hyped, or they were confused. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, the the generative work was really very low quality. Um, the artist has learned from the experience. Uh, he has learned from, you know, the, the actual technical side of, of putting these things together. And he has learned from, you know, the difference between showing someone something, them receiving something else, you know, completely different. Uh, just expectation, feedback, all these things. The, mm -hmm. the artist definitely learned from the experience. Um, and this time around... <laughs> Uh, we are definitely taking everything into account, every single little detail, um, to make sure that the art is super on point. Uh, but I also wanted, you know, to focus on utility aspects as well, mm -hmm. because that is the sort of project that it was ultimately meant to be. Um, and I definitely wanted to have a clear plan from the beginning because that was definitely not there. Uh, it was very like, okay, give me your money now. And then sure, we got lots of ideas for later. Yeah. So I suppose I, in contrast, wanted to have a very clear plan, a very clear goal in mind from the beginning. Um, I mean, I did not expect the rug. Before the rug, the artist, had, when I had quit Ada Clouds, the artist had reached out to me, you know, and he, he wanted to work with me on something. He didn't want to work with the current project leader anymore. So we actually started um, formulating ideas for something before the rug even happened. <clears throat> when the actual, hmm. but it, I actually wanted to take it much slower. <laughs> it was supposed to be like very, very long term. Uh, but then the rug happened and we thought, okay, you know, we were already trying to create something. We need to first step one is help basically the people who were involved in this situation because obviously I felt that I had a hand in it. I brought people there, you know, uh, yeah. I brought people there. I was, I was sharing the project everywhere. I was supporting the project heavily. So I definitely wanted to help everyone that was involved. And also because I myself was really disappointed too in the project. Um, I was pretty depressed with the situation. I had, when I'm involved in things, I usually put a lot 
of myself in them. So just to see something that I had put so much into turn so sour. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Can't was feel really, good. Yeah. It felt really awful. So I, I personally, I'm, I like to be productive. I don't like to mope about things. I don't like to brood about things. So mm -hmm. if there's something I can do, then I always feel better instead of, you know, dwelling on things. If I, if I know that there's clear steps I can take, as long as there's steps I can take, then that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's steps I can take, then I, I feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's exactly what you did. You, you took, right. took action. Um, so, so how was that, how was that transition from when, or how did it happen? Like the actual news so, of he's gone. Yeah. So basically, um, so when I quit because of the fact that the project leader, he seemed, first off, it, it was like, I was constantly pushing him to keep going, like. As soon as like as soon after mint when everyone was complaining about the floor he kind of like wanted to give up right away and i was freaking out because i had you know a lot of my friends had invested in the project and i felt terrible and so it was just this constant battle of pushing him to keep going um i was always giving him ideas but he never seemed willing to invest not not money not time not energy um as like the only active team member in the chat, I was the one getting all the abuse constantly. Uh, and then he kept lowering my pay like every single month. By the end of it, it just it really wasn't healthy for me to continue uh, processing the toxic environment for like very little money. Yeah. Um, as much as I wanted to keep going, that I, I basically had to quit. If, if I, I feel like... <laughs> I was, I want, I so wanted it to succeed and I so wanted to turn it around that if, if I had received like more, just not even like financial, but just like emotional support or, or like I had seen that he it's actually. It's a little bit of leadership. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I had seen some involvement, like some trying mm -hmm. on his end, then I probably would have just kept trying. Uh, but yeah, ultimately I had to yeah. quit. So basically, uh, the artist reached out to me. He wanted to quit as well. He only he only stayed to do some extra work because he said he needed the money. And then unfortunately, that last month of work that he did when he did some special promo clouds and he did the JPEG cloud and all of that, he didn't get paid for that last month. Uh, one of the mods didn't get paid for the last month. Uh, the previous dev didn't get paid for that last month. So he Yikes. basically had, I had already left, but he basically yeah. had these people do all this extra work. Um, and he was promising everyone, yeah, we're going to do something like, and it, it's, it appears to me now looking at it, like he was just waiting for the policy ID to close and for the royalty token to, to set in. Oh, wow. And then as soon as that was all set. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty shady. Yeah. He basically just packed his bags and, and just disappeared. Yeah. So I basically found out through the artist contacting me and saying, hey, did you see that, you know, the Discord is gone, the Twitter is gone, this is gone. And I had been talking to him already before. And then he told me that he hadn't gotten paid. And so that's basically when it all began. It was like yeah, a few hours of feeling really awful. And then I was like, wait a second. I'm not going down like this, you know, and then I'm not going to let this project, you know. So then I, I, I basically went just, I let Did myself. Did you get mad? <laughs> like, what were you feeling? Were you mad? Were you sad? Were you everything? I was, well, I was depressed. I was pretty depressed yeah. um, because I guess somehow Clouds always felt like my baby, maybe because it was my first project. Yeah. Uh, but even in, in, Real, like even when compared to the other projects I had worked on it was always the one that I really cared about I mean I even like I, I even made like a canvas of it that I drew myself like it was it was very special to me somehow um, so just the just the fact that all that work all that energy you know um, all, all the friends I had bought there everyone who had supported me by being there by being part of the project who believed in me who believed in the project that was really depressing yeah <laughs> it is depressing and 
every time there is a rug pull like this, I mean, it is so depressing for... I feel like it should be depressing for everybody. Like, I wasn't invested, but I still thought it was... I mean, obviously, it didn't impact me like it did you. But I'm always right. sad when I see this happen because... I know there are people like you, there are, there are your friends that invest in the project and they might just leave the CNFT space altogether, get that bad right. taste in their mouths. And it's just sad for the space. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it happens. It still continues to happen. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it is a bit like the Wild West, to be honest. Yeah. Where do you um, think... Um, <sighs> A couple of questions about the, you know on this topic in particular because you've been kind of in the in the middle of uh, of such a high profile uh, example. Um, is there anything that you learned from it, uh, and is there anything that you would oh, yeah, say to to new people that are worried about this happening to them? Yeah, absolutely. Um... For me, it was the first project that I was involved in. I was still pretty new to the space in reality. Um, I, I mean, I think I, my first mint was like Cardabots, which now has also, you know, left. Um, and one of my first purchases was Crypto Dino. It was like very early on that I got in, involved with Clouds. Um, I think the issue is that I continue to give the person, the project leader, the benefit of the doubt way too yeah. many times. Uh, like I, I would, I would sense something weird. I would hear something weird. I would see something weird. And then I would constantly like rationalize and like, just give a benefit of the doubt, give the benefit of the doubt. And yeah. I did that way too many times. You think you and didn't then, listen to like, like, I don't know, like uh, that yeah. inner voice that was telling you something isn't right. Yeah, I think most people do have, you know, a certain intuition, uh, their mm -hmm. mind. But I think that the problem is that comes with experience, too. True. So for new people in the space, these situations are just really common when you're new. If you basically don't have like a support system or other people in the space or like good friends in the space who can tell you. <clears throat> And who can warn you I, I feel like intuition really is something it's not like a psychic power it's like something that you develop with experience yeah. it's practice you start to look, yeah you start to look for certain things mm -hmm. so at the time certain things that seem suspicious i would just kind of give the benefit of the doubt or rationalize in my head because i didn't have that experience now because that was my first project and my first really negative experience i am way more attentive yeah. Um, way more protective of any project that I'm going to give my time to and be involved in. I, I mean, from the beginning, I, I try to like, now I know what kind of project, like, and I wasn't even familiar with at the time, like, uh, project models really like now I see that model and, I, and I'm, I'm super against that kind of pump and dump hype machine mm -hmm. type model. Yep. Invite go, contest. Go, blah, blah, yeah, blah. going back to what we were talking about earlier about that, you know, the difference between that slow organic growth right. with focus on long term value versus the overhyped pump and dump. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's how I roughly categorize uh, projects, you know. Right, exactly. So now I, I now that I see that all the time. That was just one of my first projects. Now that I see that all the time, now that I have to compare, which I also learned by being involved with Nifty World, by being mm -hmm. forced to do the slow growth, you know, um, and from the beginning in Nifty World, because of some of the experience in clouds, you know, I liked the fact that the project creator didn't want to do invite contests, you know, wanted to do organic growth. When I saw the delays and how that helped the community, I... I started to realize, oh, slow growth is really the way to go. So these are kind of things that I just learned. Yeah. Um, I didn't really have anyone who was like familiar with all these patterns, with all these project models and whatnot. Now I'm that someone <laughs> because I've been here a while and because I've been deeply involved in projects. So with Cardano Castle, when I started with them, it was a completely different thing because from the very beginning, I was like, okay, I'm scheduling a call. 
I mean, I knew they were looking for someone. So I scheduled a call. I was like, look, I want to see the long-term vision of this project. I yeah. want to know where you're going. I want to know that you're focused on slow organic growth. If you're not, I'm not interested. If you're not doing this, I'm not interested. If you're not <laughs> I became like way, way more demanding. Yeah. Because obviously you don't want to give your time. You don't want to give your energy it, to a project that doesn't deserve it. Um, and to a project that's going to have a negative impact rather than a positive impact on the community. So, yeah, very clearly, 100%. having been involved in those two projects, I've obviously learned a lot. I've learned about the kind of projects that I want to be part of, not just as a community manager, but even just as an investor or just as someone that shares about the project, just a fan of the project. <clears throat> I know what kind of projects I want to support and what kind of projects I don't want to support. Um, that, and everyone yeah. choose. obviously I'm not going to judge people. Oh, you're involved in that high project, but I, I will certainly not support. And if asked, I'm only going to ask to, to answer honestly, uh, if the person is willing to hear about it, obviously. So I want to talk a little bit more about Ada elements and what's been going on since you took over, uh, maybe talk a little bit about your team and what you're working on. Sure. Okay, so with Ada Elements, basically, Ada Elements began just as myself and the artist. Um, when the situation arose, after the initial, you know, feeling bad about it, I suddenly decided, you know what, whatever. <laughs> uh, we can fix it, basically. We, we already, yeah. the exchange plan that we have now, um, the project leader had actually told people about that it was the idea that i had given him before because i knew that the that the first really big problem was with the artwork so i had given mm -hmm. him the exchange idea about the separate drops and the elements and all that stuff um so i figured okay well we already have that we can we can actually do that um so i contacted the artist and i said look do you want to do this uh, i know it's not going to be like a bunch of money for you at all initially um, but I feel like we have a responsibility, um, to basically help these people first. Um, and then at the same time, you know, you can, you know, redeem yourself in some way, uh, and, and show them, you know, you are a very talented artist. Yeah. Um, you can work towards the, you know, future ideas that we had, because we were talking about space and stuff like that is, is some of the art that he was working on. Um, and he wanted to integrate that with my ideas, which I had of like making like a digital card battle type game. Uh, cause I feel like that translates easily into the NFT space. You know, people mm -hmm. are accustomed to paying for these like card packs. They're accustomed to paying, you know, tokens for that, which obviously translates e easily to like buying NFTs with tokens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, so I felt like it, it was a good connection between those two things. So the beginnings of the project, really, we had the elemental exchange, which I had already thought about in the previous project. Um, the artist, I was really happy, was actually very much, I mean, he's a completely different person from the project leader, like very em empathetic person. Mm -hmm. um, so he definitely was down uh, to help out the community. Um, that's you know, awesome for, because that's, uh, you know, that's not a given after, after going through all of that. No. And he was owed money too. I actually got out only owed like maybe a week or two or something like that. Um, yeah. when, when I left the project, he was owed for like a month of work. Mm. Um, and I mean, I don't know what he was getting paid, but I don't think it was much if you, you know, rushed the artwork at the very last minute and was constantly having to take on other commission work and whatnot. Um, and knowing the project leader, I don't think it was very much. Yeah. Um, but even so, you know, because he's an empathetic person, he was, and I'm sure because he, he has respect in his own work, just like I have respect in my own work. You know, I'm not an artist, but I, I have respect in, in what I'm putting out into the world. Um, and I value that. I value my name, even if it's a name that I made up. You know, my real name is Josephine Muffet is, you know, it's a, made, a name I made up, but I value that too. Um, and so I definitely wanted to change things and I'm happy that he did as well. So as far as the team, it was just the two of us mm -hmm. with our initial plans, which was the uh, elemental exchange I had previously um, 
the fact that he wanted to work with space stuff, the fact that I wanted to do a, a sort of digital card battle game for the future. Um, and then basically, I already knew some people that I wanted to be involved. Uh, Maria, I was working with her in Nifty World, so she was initially one of our, our Discord managers. Uh, she left later um, and just became our social media manager because she mm -hmm. was more busy with IRL work. Um, the other Discord manager is somebody that I know from Lucky Planet. I've always been a big fan of Lucky Planet. Um, oh, yeah. And a, big, yeah, and a very big fan of Lucky himself as well. Uh, and uh, I, I'm part of the OG group there. Um, and so I reached out to them to see who would be interested in helping us out as well. So he, JT, he's a good friend of mine. He basically covers the night shift. Um, and then after Maria, we actually got another uh, female mod from Nifty World to replace her, Lady Hawk. Um, and she's, you know, she's been doing a really good job as well. Uh, the dev that we encountered early on <laughs> is another uh, hiccup in the road that we took care of. Um, his name was A Code. He did help me in some fashion, uh, basically because of his knowledge. It threw a lot of back and forth with him. I was able to figure out what was possible. Okay. Uh, as far as a roadmap, what made sense for us, what was doable. So through a lot of back and forth with him, I actually <clears throat> was able to put together a detailed plan early on. Who, uh, who is who? Who is that? Where did he come from? Was he the original developer? No. So no. the original developer was Paradox, who at the time before was not Ryan. Um, a code basically was like uh, somebody who did vending for various smaller projects. Okay. Um, I know he reached out to Skulls as well, to Handies. Is it Handies? <laughs> handies, it hand yeah. Okay. Yeah, Handies. <laughs> to Handies. Um, I know that he had done work for Nemo as well. So he was somewhat well known mm. for working with smaller projects, vending okay. and stuff like that. So I formulated a roadmap with him early on, a pretty detailed one. And then, of course, he ghosted us uh, like Yikes. two times. Yeah. The first time that he ghosted us, I was obviously in a panic. You know, I, I I'm, was not sure what I could accomplish myself, but I couldn't. Um, so uh, I, I reached out to every possible social media of his that I knew of. He finally got back to me and said, yeah, um, uh, apparently he had a death in the family or something like that. He said he would come back in a week. So I gave it another week and then nothing again. And then at that time I was like, okay, time to look for someone else. Because yeah. for me, the worst part is to be in limbo. Absolutely hate just waiting not knowing what the situation is, if I'm supposed to be preparing and I'm not, if somebody's really going to come back or what's going to happen. So basically, he delivered on nothing, even though he did help me with... Uh, sorry about my kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are very familiar sounds. <laughs> even though uh, he helped with the initial plans, which I value that, definitely. Mm -hmm. I. I don't know what his intentions were. I know that he has left many projects in the dust. Yeah, um, that's, I mean, it's okay to criticize that behavior because it's not very professional leaving projects in limbo. Um, you know, it's okay to call that out. <laughs> and not communicating that in any way also. I mean, if yeah. I'm a reasonable person, if you come to me and you tell me, look, I don't even think I can do this anymore. At least I'm saving time, you know. Exactly. Uh, I'm burnt out. I'm overwhelmed. I picked up way too many projects at once. Okay. All right. Thank you for telling me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that because I basically lost like a week or two um, of time that I could have been looking for other people. Um, well, the bright side of crisis number two is um, I realized, basically I, I just reached out to many people. Most of, of, of my Positive experiences, well, my negative ones as well, but most of my learning in the space just comes from communicating, communicating, reaching out to different people, learning different things. So mm -hmm. I just reached out to various people. 
Um, and I realized there was a lot of stuff that I could do myself. Um, I reached out to the uh, former developer for Clouds. Um, okay. so basically, we are going to use NFT Maker Pro. Um, his setup, I am just going to pre-mint everything uh, for our first drop myself. Um, because the issue was an exchange requires custom code, which no yeah. one was willing to do. Um, okay. Most people just use NFT Maker Pro, which doesn't do exchanges. Um, there were there are not a lot of devs right now, especially in our current lull right now that we're experiencing, um, who are using custom code or willing to. I mean, you have talented devs like Fence Maker, but they're involved in their own project. So yep. that my, my initial uh, roadblock. Uh, because we, no, I, don't, I don't think you're alone in that, by the way. I think uh, development side of, of uh, a successful project is one of the most kind of underrated in terms of how difficult it is, uh, especially if you want to do something custom, like you were saying. Uh, there, there are some d very talented developers out there, but they, they got plenty of work. They got so much going on. Um, and so, we yeah. also have limited budget because we're a revival mm -hmm. project. Yeah. What I'm trying to with people is 15 ADA, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is very little. Um, yeah. And obviously, we're doing tiered pricing. Um, we're charging 15 initially because we want to give people the opportunity to either liquidate or, you know, get on board with the roadmap if they like what's going on, they like what we're doing. Um, so that tiered pricing is there to help people cash out and cash in over time. Um, but yeah, so we were facing an issue because uh, we needed custom code. <clears throat> so either it was an out of budget situation or it was a situation where really no one was willing to do it because right now most people are just using NFT Maker Pro, which doesn't allow for exchanges. It does have something where basically it can check if you have a certain NFT in your wallet, but it's not going to swap it out you know, for a new one. So basically... Um, speaking to my team, um, who, uh, oh, okay, it's, it's kind of complicated, but yeah, speaking to my team, um, we came up with the idea together that, okay, we'll use NFT Maker Pro set up uh, with Paradox, the former cloud um, developer. I will pre-mint everything and then I will do the exchanges manually by tier. Um, on the bright side of doing the exchanges manually is, to be honest, it was all quite complex that a lot could have gone wrong mm -hmm. um, because we could have had people who didn't have any clouds get new clouds. <laughs> you know, we could have had all, uh, all sorts of situations. Yeah. Um, the white, because I've seen a lot of whitelists fail completely recently, like people grinding. Yep. I'm, I don't have grinding in my chat, but I've seen people oh, grind by heaven. And then they don't actually get anything guaranteed because the whitelist completely fails because of like high traffic or what have mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So really, we, we it's going to be more time consuming. Um, and but at the same time, it's going to be more clear, more easy to ensure that things go to the right people and in the right way. So we're actually going to be doing the exchanges manually through tier. Basically, Exosphere Group, those are the, we actually have a lot of cloud whales, mind you. Um, those are the people with 10 or more clouds. They're guaranteed five for the first 50 in that group. Okay. Um, for the Thermosphere Group, the those who have four or more are guaranteed three for the first 100 in that group. So first, we're going to basically do the exchanges for our whales then for our dolphins um, then for our whitelist, which is just going to be people whom I see support us and are active, and I just quietly give them whitelist um, to avoid the how to whitelist. How to? How to yeah, whitelist. exactly. I will just bless you with whitelist um, if if you know if you show up for us, and I know you're you're a genuine supporter. Um, I, yeah, I honestly think that's one of the best systems we have right now because uh, yeah. some of the other ways are just not that good. <laughs> Well, um, for one thing, it's not a guarantee. Maybe, maybe I'd be willing to grind to level 10 if it meant I was really going to get something. But nowadays, you don't even know with all of these like really poorly done mints. Imagine wasting exactly. all that time. 
Yep. You know, that's the worst. Yeah. Speaking of wasting time, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically we worked out the deaf part. We're in a good place right now. I, maybe I should knock on wood. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're back. My camera died. And so, uh, your face is a little bit bigger. Mine has disappeared. Uh, but that's just, just you know, that's, that's what happens. Um, yeah but we were talking about you know the the drop and you've already Dead. told me a little right. bit about it but but what else should people know that that you know might not have like me might have kind of dismissed uh, ada clouds and not really been into ada elements what you know what do people know need to know uh if they want to get into it Okay, well, um, basically, if you want to be part of a project that is very community focused, basically, um, the community has very much shaped everything. Uh, the team has very much shaped everything. I'm somebody who's very teamwork oriented. I love to listen. I love to take feedback. Um, I love to see what it is that people are expecting what they want to see. I don't consider myself omniscient. I definitely like to take ideas from other people uh, and build something together because I feel that will form a more complete picture. So if you want to be part of a community project that very much takes you into account, um, if that is something that is exciting to you as a newcomer who doesn't have any former clouds, Uh, we will actually be offering very diverse artwork. We have our elemental artwork. We have four separate drops. Uh, the first one is air, which will be clouds. Then there will be fire, then earth and water. Um, these are actually going to be exchanges because we do very much care about value. So what we are trying to do is remove the saturation from the original drop and basically We expect and hope for people to hold the clouds that they like the most, um, the nicest looking clouds, because I do think some of them, you know, are charming in their own way um, and mm -hmm. that they will be exchanging just basically the least popular, the least harmonious, um, the ones that just, you know, basically don't look aesthetically pleasing. And in turn, we will be raising the quality and value of the collection over time. So if you want to be part of a long-term community project, um, basically there will be 1,000 new clouds, the new air collection, and we will swap out 1,000 of the old ones. Then we will swap out 1,000 of the old ones for 1,000 new earth collection, which will be completely new art. It's not going to have the base cloud that we know and love now. Mm -hmm. um, the, it will be the same with fire and water. So basically we are exchanging 4K of the original collection and leaving only 1.5 of the original clouds. The original clouds, after all four drops, you will actually be able to stake for our elemental coins. You will be able to get air, earth, water, fire coins. The ratio will basically be for new air collection, you will get like four uh, air coins, but only air. And then if you have an OG clouds, you would get like two air, two earth, two water, two fire is the ratio, not the specific coin amounts. So it would be basically half of what you would get um, from the new collection. So the idea of the new project is to have diverse, high quality artwork. Um, if you haven't seen the new clouds, you definitely should. They are 3K, they are beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I have them up on the screen right now. I, I think they look yeah. really good. They look better. I mean, zoom into the eyes. That's my favorite part, zooming into the eyes constantly. They look better than the previous promos because while the previous promos looked very good, Um, they look more personable now. They have more personality now. Um, even if, even though the traits are random and you wouldn't think they go together, they look harmonious in the artwork. Um, I am actually a collector myself when it comes to NFTs. I'm very, very picky. 
about artwork. So this is something we have definitely been focused on. Um, mm -hmm. If you're more about art, if you're more about art, we have that. If you are more about utility, we have that. If you're more about community, we definitely have that. Um, but yeah, the the new artwork, I'm super excited about. I I'm FOMOing hard. I <laughs> <laughs> I I want to collect these, and that that makes me happy that I'm part of a project where I personally definitely want to collect these. Um, I as, aside from the new artwork, you you definitely need to see if you haven't seen. Um, we do care about value. We do care about community. I don't say that every art project needs to have roadmap, but we definitely have very clear goals. Uh, you can check out our detailed roadmap on the server. Um, you can check out a brief outline of it on the website. Uh, but we want to make a fun project that will create its own healthy ecosystem in a way long term. Basically, if you only want to stake your OG clouds because you're very attached to them, you can do that. If you're not interested in the project and you want to cash out, we are creating an opportunity for you to definitely do that as well. If you only want to collect the new artwork, you're not interested in the old one, you can do that as well. Basically, the coin system that we have, um, you can get utility in various ways. You can earn in various ways. Um, in the future, I hope to bring in you know, gamers even who maybe have no interest in holding the NFTs and just want to buy the coins and play the game. Um, mm. So I really, hmm? but yeah, so my, my hope is definitely to make a healthy ecosystem where everyone can contribute in their own way. Um, I think long-term phase two uh, for the game, the big thing for me with that is bridging into the gaming community, bringing more people in, because I think we badly need that in the Cardano space um, in, in regards to NFTs. And I think a game is a good way to keep a community alive, keep a community engaged, um, keep them participating, interacting together. Uh, so I, I definitely have a strong long-term vision for the project. Uh, we have a great community. We have a great team and we have great artwork. Definitely check it out. Um, don't count us out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm actually, yeah. I, I mean, it sounds like you you have thought about the entire vision, something that, that the initial creator probably should have done, and you are emphasizing uh, the right things, taking the right approach. And uh, I mean, they're pretty ambitious goals, honestly, especially the yeah. game. <laughs> that's, you know, that's kind of, that's, well, the, that's the uh, easier said than not. done. Yeah, absolutely. The game is part of phase two. So phase one, we're focusing on um, the groundwork for the utility, basically the staking system and all that and the various ways that you can earn coins. We're focused on, you know, replacing the old artwork. And phase one is more about the basically the rugged community and also bringing in new people. So helping mm -hmm. the former community, the former holders and bringing in new people. Phase two is a whole new ball game. Um, at, at, by the time phase two rolls around, hopefully everyone who was affected by the situation was able to either cash out or buy in. Um, so it will be all new pricing because obviously for a game, it's going to be different pricing if that's what our goal is, which it is. Yeah. Um, so phase two, the new collection, which would be the season two collection is the space collection that the artist was already working on. Um, oh, so okay. that is the, yeah, that is the fifth element, which is essence will be completely different pricing and will be more focused on the game, which is what will allow for the true circulation of our tokens. Because for phase one, the tokens are going to have to be distributed in a diminishing returns, um, sort of way and then phase two we're hoping to do it in more of a revenue sort of distribution uh due to having people involved with the game okay. uh, but yeah it's it's a very long-term thing um well, and that's, the, two, that's the opposite opposite of what it you know what the old project was <laughs> about about short-term right things. yeah so yeah, i love exactly. to see that yeah so it's an ambitious project nowadays Nowadays, it's funny because I hear everybody say like, promise little and then, but, <laughs> <laughs> but for us, we're like, no, we're, we, we have it clear. We know what we're going to, we want to do and we're just going to go hard and we're going to do our best. I mean, anytime there's a roadblock, mm -hmm. 
uh, we find a way around it. Honestly, uh, there you may think you need certain connections, you may think you need certain people, but really, honestly, it's very true that where there's a will, there's a way. If you're very passionate about something, you will find a way around it. You will find a way to make it happen. I mean, just compare the fact that the previous project leader had like what a hundred thousand and eight at least, mm -hmm. and didn't do a thing. You know, in, in comparison. We started with me putting in my money, me fronting my money initially, um, which thanks to the JPEG store donation, I was able to pay myself back and use some of that as well. Um, and we have a very small budget, but we are we're managing to to do everything that we're setting out to do. Um, really, you do need to work with other people. Other people are very important. But if, if you yourself um, have the drive to do something if and you're the kind of person that you know respects other people can work with other people um and doesn't give up then then you know you have very good odds of in my opinion of pulling it off yeah uh honestly like just listening to you and and trying to understand the uh, eight elements a little bit better i feel like now it's it's kind of like that that little what's the what's the um the character like the little engine that could isn't that oh, yeah. the phrase yeah i feel like that's uh that it's a project that i want to root for you know um so i'm i'm definitely gonna gonna see if i can i can get into the project and um yeah take a look around yeah um uh, all right. So all of the links to your socials and, and to your Discord are going to be in the description. So guys, go go ahead and, and check them out there. Um, I do. I There was one question that I wanted to ask you uh, that, that we didn't get to. And sure. that is kind of off topic, but not really. But I, it, it is an important topic. Um, and it sounds like it is for you as well. And that is how do we get more women into the space you we already touched on it i'm glad to see at least as many women on your team as men but how do we yeah you know that that's something that you is that something you think about it sounds like it and and what can what can we do uh, to kind of improve that i just checked out my youtube analytics by the way and 0 0.7 percent of my viewers are women <laughs> I, I would like to improve that well, I think um, if we continue to try to branch out the space, um, then obviously more women will come into the space. Um, I know fetish friends, they are definitely trying to do more ETH collaboration type projects to bring more of the female creators, female artists that are in mm -hmm. ETH into the CNFT space. For my part, uh, really what I have just been doing is trying to like shine a bit of a light as much as I can uh, with to female creators in the space, just get them a bit more visibility, um, a bit more appreciation, because to be very honest, um, recently there was a time when I was like artistically bored with CNFTs. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of, derivatives and then people just constantly throwing money at like the most boring the most bland uh the most redundant artwork sorry <laughs> no I'm i not mean you're you're, you're just say, speaking the truth <laughs> um and then i discovered one female artist who Thankfully, uh, has been holding a uh, fetish friends who has been holding a space called She Mints. Um, mm. And through her, I was able to meet so many other female artists. And then like that boring, dull part of, of the space completely changed. Like uh, I had a, a new landscape completely. Um, I, I found projects that I'm super excited about, like Crypto Fairies. Um, Fetish Friends is another one. We actually found also a female artist in our community who I commissioned to do uh, the fan art that I had done for Clouds long ago. I commissioned her to make it into something that I could mint. And she did. And it's amazing. And now she's going to be starting her own collection called Donut Head. So just FYI, this That's is cool. shine 
Shine Like Sugar from Twitter. She's going to be starting her own collection, Donut Head. Um, so basically, the, what I have noticed um, is basically, if you are a female creator in the space, um, just support other female creators in the space. Try to uh, shine a light on them. That way, when people discover you, they can discover them. And then it really brightens the space because honestly, She Men's is has to be the funnest spaces, most chill, most completely different vibe. Um, again, sorry to not pull punches, but so much of the space is just clout chasing. No, it's true. And that's something that just bores me like i i can't i can't <sighs> sit through some of these these spaces sorry but it's yeah. the truth it's just a constant uh, constant yeah. uh, battle for attention yeah. and trying to pitch your own or show <laughs> your own stuff yeah it, it gets pretty yeah. boring patting yourself and patting everybody on the back over yeah. and over like, i know oh. But uh, this but, is why I wanted to ask you this question because you know maybe that that one, one or two women that that watch my content they will they will realize that um, this is out there you know it's not just a bunch of of, of dudes that that are gonna call you bro all the time uh, we you know we have this and bro I even put a female symbol in my name, um, and I certainly call me bro more than ever. I know, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. No biggie, no biggie. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, it, it's it's uh, hopefully a, a trend that's going to continue to strengthen, and we're going to see that continue to blossom, and, and those sort of cool spaces. I mean, obviously, I might not be the right person to be there, but I'm, I'm uh, you know, I, I want to support absolutely everyone is invited uh it, she meant is meant to spotlight female artists but of course you know male creators absolutely are part of the space as well and can attend uh the idea is just you know just to shine a light a bit more and female creators give them a bit more of an opportunity you know to talk and share their work but yep. there, there definitely are you know men who attend the space and that is totally awesome cool good to uh, know but yeah Basically, yeah, just just shine a light on, on other female artists, other female creators, you know, create since there's less of us, if we if we kind of stand together more, we create more of a support system where we share each other's work, um, <clears throat> support each other's work, then more people can discover us through each other. Um, and mm -hmm. that's basically how it has come to be for me. You know, I discovered a lot of the beautiful female creators through just the first one that I discovered and through these spaces of female creators. And it's great because I was really bored with a lot of what yeah, I was seeing. Exactly. And now some really cool stuff. And there's smaller projects, there are projects. The thing is, since there's not so many women in the space, especially even in the Cardano space, which is even smaller than ETH. <clears throat> The, lit, the mints are smaller because the art is not going to appeal to the wider audience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just, you know, just keep supporting those creators and not, not just, you know, here, you know, donating to them. But if you love the art, you know, support it, be, be part of it. Really just, I understand that, you know, not everyone can be a collector. Not everyone has that luxury of being able to collect. Some people, they need to make money. But um, when you can, support something because you love it and you want to see more of it. You know, I feel like the reason we see so many derivatives is because we support so many derivatives because we think they're easy money. But in reality, even if short term uh, you're making money, long term you are just making the space look bad, uh, yep. in my opinion. Uh Exactly. More. We need the space to get more interesting, get more diverse, and and we need to accept the fact that it is a thing to buy art for art's sake, for enjoyment. Uh, that yeah. is the thing, <laughs> and and it's not just about the pump and dump, uh, you know, profit chasing. That's not all that the CNFT space is about. So, could not agree more. Shout out to my at least a couple of uh, female led teams that i particularly like yeah. uh claymates and uh mast on buttons and uh yeah now maybe ada elements is gonna join the list <laughs> because i i need to i need to get myself some some um some uh, some of your nfts yeah check us out 
Well, we're happy to have you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been a, a great chat. Um, and it's a nice bonus for the viewer that my camera died. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this has been this has been fun, and it was really nice to meet you. Same here. <laughs>